All right, friends, as prefaced, special guest time for Amex Week on this episode of the Spicer Speaking Podcast. As I told you at the outset of the program, we've got a World Golf Hall of Famer in our midst, 21-time PGA Tour winner, including winner of the PGA Championship, a couple of players' championships, and all manner of representation as a player and captain on Ryder Cup and President's Cup teams, respectively. You want me to keep going, Davis Love the Third, as I bring you in? No, no, that's, just, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a long resume. We could do the entire segment just talking about your resume if you want. One time when Tiger and Phil were playing together, they started going through everything that Tiger had won on the first tee, and finally Phil goes, "Okay, enough, enough." <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to hear every once in a while, but uh, yeah, let's get to the to the good stuff. Let's get to the meat. Yeah. Uh, that said, it's uh, it's been a spell since we've seen you out here in the desert. Uh, by my count, even though I'm not that good at counting, uh, 2014 since we've had you play in the American Express. Of course, it was played under a different iteration at that time. To what do we owe the pleasure of your return, sir? Well, um, I, as you said, I've been involved a lot in Presidents Cups and Ryder Cup, and I'm Presidents Cup captain this year. So I feel like I need to play a little bit more on the regular tour. Um, hopefully I can play a lot out here and have a little bit of success. Um, like Steve Stricker or Jim Furyk seem to always play well on whichever tour they play on. Um, I haven't played well on either tour lately, so hopefully I can get it going a little bit. But um, I've got a lot of friends at American Express, and they've been asking me if you know I come back and play one more time. And um, – so one more time or maybe two, <laughs> I'm not going to hold myself to this is the last go around on the regular tour, but um, I wanted to play here one more time. I always love coming to the desert. I am skipping a very good champion store event, the Mitsubishi in Hawaii, but with just everything that was going on um, in my life. And then with the virus and, um, you know, travel, I just felt like this was a good year for me to, um, to give one more go around in Palm Springs. Um, and we're appreciative of, uh, of having you back for many of the reasons that you just mentioned. Certainly going to get to the uh, upcoming uh, President's Cup here shortly. Uh, in the years that you played out here in the desert a lot, back when it was a five-day event, back when it was played on a different rotation of courses, you had a lot of success. Not one of your 21 wins, but you generally played pretty darn well. Uh, I would make a lot of birdies. You know, this is especially back in the five round days, it was a big putting contest. And, you know, I was a streaky putter. So when um, when it was a big, big, long, hard golf course and I putted well, I, I would do well. Or um, every once in a while, I'd get on some greens that I liked, like Hilton Head. Um, for some reason, I putted very, very well there uh, almost every year I played. So I just never made the massive amounts of birdies it took to win here. I would beat up some par fives and um, and then I have some good finishes, but as you said, I never won here, but I always enjoyed playing here and it kind of set up my, I always like going to Sony, um, starting off the year and then coming here, I felt like, you know, I got on some greens that I liked and I got my game going and, and got ready for a big West coast swing. Uh, of course, uh, Davis Love is back. Uh, obviously the Quinta country club is back. Wasn't played last year per the pandemic. Uh, the pro-am is also back. Didn't have that last year. I always, when I cover the event, Davis, I always like kind of keeping an eye on which pros seem to be having a good time and joking around and chatting it up with the AMs and which guys are just extremely focused and they're just totally in, in business mode. And I assume that they hope that the AMs are having a good time, but they're not not not, not quite as, as garrulous. What, what's your attitude always been for playing with the Pro-Am? Well, I've always enjoyed it. Like you said, I played there a lot when it was – you know, four rounds with amateurs. I played Pebble Beach a whole lot. Uh, I played the, the old Disney tournament a lot. And and I had some success in those tournaments because, like you said, I think I had a good attitude. I always enjoyed meeting friends. Um, again, my my friends from American Express didn't come from me being a business guy. They came from us playing golf together. And, I, well, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of shots and um, a lot of good shots, a lot of bad shots. and <laughs> But my favorite – you know, um, Bob Hope or Palm Springs story is um, I got on the same rotation as Emmett Smith one year, but I was like two or three groups behind him. 
and never really got to talk to him. And so we finally on the Palmer course, he got a backup on a par three, somebody hit in a lake or something. And we caught up to him and I said, Hey, I'm Davis Love. Nice to meet you. And um, I said, how's your week going? He goes, man, I am worn out. I go, you're worn out. <laughs> he goes, yeah, we usually ride in carts. He goes, I'm tired. I go, you got the biggest legs in the, in the whole field and you're, and you're tired. And uh, so it was fun to get to meet people. Obviously, I got to go to Bob Hope's house here when I played back in the day. And oh, cool. Um, so many cool things happen around and in the pro am that don't happen in a regular week. So um, it, you just got to have a good attitude going in. It's not going to be as fast. It's going to be different. You're going to see some bad shots. You might get a guy that's um, not the most fun to play with. But generally, overall, it's, it's, it makes the week um, if you go in with a good attitude. It's interesting. Emmett Smith, yeah, NFL's all time leading rusher, lacking for stamina on the golf course. Tired. <laughs> Friends, you're tuning into the Spicer Speaking Podcast. World Golf Hall of Famer Davis Love III is my guest competing in this week's Amex. The tee times actually just came out a few minutes before this visit. Davis getting his week underway Thursday, as are all players. 8.50 on the stadium course, competing alongside Brendan Todd. David has mentioned uh, President's Cup year, uh, an event uh, that uh, you're obviously well-versed with, uh, having participated uh, six times before this captaincy happening on very familiar turf for you uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, Quail Hollow. When you come out to an event, as perhaps you did when you were two-time captain of the Ryder Cup, is there a scouting element for you? Yeah, it's, it's definitely. And that's the main reason I'm going to try to play a lot on the regular tour this year is to scout or to say hi to guys. You know, I got to hit balls beside Patrick Cantlay today and talk to him a little bit. Um, I saw uh, Johnny Vegas and CT Pan on the flight coming in, and they had Pres- President's Cup gear on. So I, now I've already learned that I got to give out more T-shirts and hats this year, keep up with uh, Captain Emelman because these guys are wearing it on the airplane. But um, it's just good to be visible. If guys want to ask me questions or um, if we want to go out to dinner, um, play a practice round, things like that. I played with Zach Johnson yesterday, and we talked about plans for – Charlotte so it's it's helpful to be around and be out here and um and I love I love being out with the young guys on the course is there anything specifically again given your two-time Ryder Cup captaincy something on the course that you're looking for in particular whether it be for an American player or an international player well I'm I'm looking for the same um level of play we had at the Ryder Cup those guys were uh, on fire I've never seen a team playing so well and also um, so committed to just doing everything they could to be ready to play. Um, it was a very um, organized and um, calm and collected, um, efficient team. So I'm looking to, you know, for that core leadership, we won't have the exact same 12 guys, but that core leadership to be there again. And then, um, you know, Quail Hall is a big, hard golf course. We need, we need our ball strikers, which we've got a lot of great ones. We need them ready to go. And obviously we're a long team. We don't need any more long hitters. We need, Guys are hitting a good tee to green. Strokes gained tee to green is a big stat for us in 16 um, on, the, on a big golf course, and I think it would be very similar in Charlotte. Uh, apparel aside, what about uh, the international players? We have opportunity to be, uh, to be around them as well this week, several that have been on recent President's Cup teams and several that look to be on the team in September. What do you look at for the opponents? Well, watching Matsuyama last week and um, their guys are playing well too. You know, it's, it's, even though we have won a lot of President's Cups, it's gotten a little too close um, lately. They've, they've picked up their game. Um, obviously, we've, we've um, lost and tied an away game, but we've, we've never lost a home game. But, you know, they're coming. Um, it's it's going to be harder and harder it, for us to win Ryder Cups and President's Cups just because the rest of the world is getting better. Um, we're one country taking on half the world at a time, and um, it's just going to get tougher and tougher. So we have to be ready. I mean, our guys, um, they're well aware of, of how good the international team is, and um, it's not going to be just to show up and play and have fun. We're, we're going to be serious about it. Do you think that, I mean, the Americans obviously have totally dominated the President's Cup, which is a much shorter history, of course, than, than the Ryder Cup. But as it gets closer and the last go-around was close, uh, do you feel that it's going to be, become more compelling for people to watch? Yeah, I think, you know, we certainly don't want to, to start losing 
but uh, that's why the Ryder Cup um, got interesting is because we started losing it. Um, it's like, like America's Cup yacht racing. I always say nobody cared about it until we started losing. Then we say, how can we lose a boat race? We're, we're the U.S. Team USA. We should we should win it. And um, everybody seemed to get interested in the Ryder Cup. Um, you know, obviously when Seve and Bernard, um, those guys showed up. But when we started losing, when it became a competitive match, the Ryder Cup got really, really interesting. So, um, yeah, we want the international team to be competitive and close. You know, obviously, we, we don't want to lose. We certainly don't want to lose at home. So um, we're going to be serious about it and, and be ready. But we know that it's going to be competitive and get more competitive every year. Just a couple more for you today, Davis. Appreciate your time during Amex Tournament Week. Uh, you've had so much success, uh, as mentioned success in the international events came oftentimes by way of your play in singles Ryder cup record of three, one, and two, and an even more sterling singles record of the president's cup of four, one, and one. Is that something that you look for in particular, a singles player when you're kind of scouting it out this year? Yeah. It, singles is really, really important. Um, I think that's, you know, one thing that, um, guys kind of miss and now there's more points in the president's cup before singles day but still there's 12 points um on sunday and you have to be ready to play singles it's it's tough matching guys up you know we've got some pretty good pairings built already that if um we go on the, the last couple of president's cups and the last couple of rider cups we've got some good good pairings and it's always hard to match up the new guys you know we bring in scotty scheffler and you, you know who's he going to play with but we have to win singles. Uh, you can't just go in and, and not do well on Sunday. So, yes, we look for guys that are, are good partners for guys on the team, and then we look for guys that we know we can trust on Sunday. One uh, other number i got to sneak in here. Uh, this week's event will be your 783rd PGA Tour event, and you are chasing a very rare <clears> – <throat> pardon me – record in that, sir, Mark Brooks might surprise some people he has played in the most pga tour events ever 803 kind of nipping at his heels does that record interest you davis it's it's very interesting to me <laughs> um I, I sat out there today playing with some younger guys in a practice round um i've missed a lot of golf in the last five years because of injuries like my friend tiger woods we haven't gotten full seasons in very often um lately so i'm very interested in, in knocking off mark brooks i really don't want to go by Jay Haas, but I have to get by Jay Haas to get to Mark Brooks. And then um, I think if I make five or six more cuts, I'll, I'll go past um, Arnold Palmer. Um, there's there's a few guys ahead of me on that list as well. I think I have to make play 20 more events and maybe make 20 more cuts um, to get both of those records. So that would be a nice goal. So I need to, um, I need to get in the gym. <laughs> I need to work on my putting. Um, there's some little things I need to do to, to make that happen. But, um, you know, if I get on a roll this year and I'm feeling good, and I'm, I'm, I'm playing decent. I'm going to play a lot on the regular tour and, and chase down Brooksy. One more for you today, sir. And I'm perhaps I, I buried a, a personal lead while you are Davis love the third for me, you are the second love brother. I've had the opportunity to interview. I had to go back to my own archives for sea Island, uh, magazine, uh, the resorts magazine, your brother, of course, Mark Love, uh, 2019, had opportunity to interview Mark about the work, the design work, architectural work that uh, that you fellows did at the Plantation Course, of course, which you're certainly very uh, very familiar with. How is the uh, how's the design business going? And as a follow up to that, I know that it's different for some for some players. I mean, do you, do you get does it get the juices going in the same way that playing golf? gets the juices flowing for you? Yes, uh, I, I love the design business. I, I really like the heavy equipment. I like getting out there and, and actually driving it, building stuff, um, digging holes and pushing dirt. Um, so I, I love being out there. I love creating. We just walked the center lines of a, a new course we're doing on the west coast of Florida for St. Joe Paper. And just starting at that point when all it is is, is PVC pipes in the woods and you're following along, uh, we walked, I think, five miles uh, in a day just looking at at trees and plastic stakes, um, trying to get a vision for what the golf course is going to be. And then in a year from now, when we have grass down in a golf course, it's just an incredible transformation. So 
I love doing it. We're, we're very busy now. Mark's um, running all over everywhere and I catch up to him when I can. And uh, I think we have four, currently four projects going like everything in golf. Uh, the pandemic has kicked it off, but um, there's so many older golf courses that 20, 30, 40 years in that they have to have some work done. Modernizing it lengthwise is one thing, but just, you know, new grass. Eventually you're going to have to put a new roof and paint your house. So a lot of these golf courses, we're getting a lot of business um, fixing it up and, and modernizing it. We're, we're becoming um, a little bit of a, a renovation expert. We, we love building brand new golf courses, but we've had a lot of, like you said, plantation course, one for sea pines. We've, we're doing a, a peat dye course right now in Colorado. We're, we're getting known for um, our work in renovation. So that, that's been great and um, just happy to have something to do. Now, I'm not going to let it take too much time away from uh, President's Cup this year, but we got a course in North Carolina I can work on when I'm up there in Charlotte. And, um, just happy that, uh, like everything in golf, like it's, we've seen a boom on the course, off the course, equipment, everything. It's been great. Um, the pandemic has been terrible for the world, but it's been actually good for golf. Davis Love the third friends, from your golf courses, designing and renovating to the courses you know, that uh, you'll be playing at the Amex this week. So appreciative of your time. Look forward to seeing you out in La Quinta. And thank you for joining the Spicer Speaking Podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you out here on the course.